to be interpreted. There is the theory and there's the practicality. But when I look at all that history, the thing that's missing is, it, is the absence of a comprehensive attempt to present the perfected law. Mm. So the way I view it is this, Ron, and people will be different. There will be those <clears throat> that are in a survivalist mode. And I encourage that because those that plan for a future that may involve some temporary climactic and, and traumatic climactic change, I hope in that process that they will take copies of uh, Eucadia uh, and amongst other things into whatever survival mode they have so that there is a chance that that knowledge will survive. My role my role is to do the level best I can to fulfill everything that I have promised with Acadia until those days come. Um, that's my focus. So it's not that I'm not interested in it. I am. It's not that I... Uh, in fact, there's no even I don't want to be aware. I am aware of this. But my focus very much is about the knowledge and the model um, and I don't begrudge anyone that wishes to focus on the survival aspect. But it will be used as a tool, Ron, and bet your bottom dollar, it will be used as a tool by many to instill fear and, and try and get the reactions that, uh, you know, impending potential disaster can bring. Right. right. So Thank good you. on you. I bring everybody up to speed on it. Yep. Very good. Hey, uh, Ron, could you yeah. go ahead and ask a question about the EIN that you have in the chat? Hey, Frank, Frank, we're we're trying to slide into this position of um, general executor. Do you yep. think we should create an EIN for the estate, and we claim ourselves okay. as the executor? Okay, that is an excellent excellent question, and it brings me to. Um, knowledge that has been presented before, which at the time, um, I have to say, I mean, I wasn't fully, I didn't seal the picture. Those that have perfected a relationship with the IRS, the ATO and others, where they can maintain engagement in commerce, but not face the relentless haranguing have done a two-stage process with EINs, not a one-stage. And the two-stage was, and, and I have to say to you that this knowledge has been kept very, very close to people's chests, uh, either for profit or for not wanting it to be, you know, wrecked or whatever the reasons. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not clear. But the first was to create the... EIN as the executor of the estate and claim that position. Yeah. And then the second was to create the private trust from that. Yeah? Private trust from an estate. Well, the first one was to, to effectively uh, collect the, the probate on the presumption that they're collecting it. Yeah? Oh, I see. And then the second was to basically administer your own trust, which is what we've been trying to do. Well, so it's an additional step. Uh, I've seen the material before. I, at the time, um, remembering here that I'm not here to edify their system, far from it. Right. But I think what I think what I would be saying, in fact, I want to, what I want to say to everyone is I'm mindful it's great to hear this knowledge, but how to use it, how to get on with it. I think we need to, in this transition of, of uh, websites, make a general audit on all the material that we're presenting and uh, take a long, hard look at, at what we now know and what appears to be the most solid presentments on these areas. Look, people have to live, they have to work. They have to survive, and for better or for worse, they're still having to live in those pens, those prison estate nations, aren't they? Yep. So it's another area, Ron, and uh, yes, I've seen the two-stage EIN, and uh, 
that may well be a, a stronger position than uh, the one stage EIN that, that has been shown before. Mm. Okay? Okay. Uh, thank, yeah, thank you, Ron. Okay. Frank, Frank, thank you so much, and thank you, Frank, for uh, going ahead and getting on that. That was a really, really good question, and didn't want to, to uh, forget about that one. No, so good question. question. Guess, guess 50. How do you use acceptance of bond and oath and tribunal record of court properly with the magistrate, cop, or clerk? Give examples, please. Sure. Again, we've got material on the sites that, that needs to be updated. Uh, I mean, the, the routine will go something... Uh, I mean, the first thing I would be suggesting to, any, to anyone going to court is, um, uh, is to state that I am convening a court of record. That's always the first thing you'd want to get up there now, now that we understand more about the fact that the courts are not a court of record unless you're in one of the most senior courts. This is a realisation of presumption that we before had made a presumption of and clearly we were in error. Um, but as far as acceptance of bond and oath, then you, um, you defeat the presumption or you make the presumption by simply saying, uh, I accept your oath and, and your bond of oath. And you say that to the, to the magistrate. I accept your oath and bond of oath of office as a public servant, as a public trustee. You, just, you literally just make it that, that open to them as part of the opening. They say, uh, uh, Franco Collins, or matter, it's Franco Collins here. I, I'm here for that matter. Who are you? I'm the general executive for that matter. You know, and that's where the dialogue starts. And straight away, of course, the magistrate's going to... If I'm in a magistrate's court, I would absolutely say, um, I am the general guardian uh, for that person and the general executive for that matter. So I'd be absolutely putting in the general guardianship. And then I say, and I accept your oath and bond of oath as a public trustee to handle the matter. So I'd follow up with that pretty soon after. Look, it's really important. I mean, these dialogues, when you go to magistrate's court, I mean, we're talking about something that is it's, it's like a speed dial, speed dating, right? I mean, you've got literally seconds to speak. And I know that that's how they get people to trip up. So they're quite happy for people to have some pre-prepared, long-winded, 20-line di you know, dialogue, monologue, I should say, in the hope that you're going to trip up. We're going to make that much simpler for you. The, 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 the answers to that will be much simpler. But the short answer is, uh, Frank O'Collins, I'm here for that matter. Who are you? Uh, I am the general guardian for that person and the general executive for this, for this matter. And I accept your oath and bond of oath as, a public as you are a public trustee, a public servant. That's all you have to say. And then they go, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, they do the whole song and dance. You've heard that before, the song and dance. So, but it's that simple. Okay? Right. Usually they don't want to go much further than that. All right, Frank, well, that's about it for the questions. And there's been a request, if you would, to wrap up tonight's call with the Supreme Financial System updates. Uh, you might have covered it a little bit earlier, but um, we're asking for uh, an update or uh, when you'll be getting to it, that kind of thing. And uh, are we on for next week while we're on this? Absolutely. Okay. We're absolutely on. The Okay. <clears throat> the Supreme Financial System is crucial to be correct in its structure, which is what has been happening in the background, but more importantly, is brought to life in the right way. I can think of no better way for the supreme financial system to be brought to life than in tandem with the registration of valid campuses being the local communities, campuses being the building blocks then of provinces, 
provinces then being the building blocks of universities, universities then being the building blocks of unions. The charters for the campuses have been largely finalised for some time and the kit for creating a campus have been there for some time and I would have loved to have them turned on months ago. For better or for worse, the focus has been on perfecting the canons of positive law. But before the end of August, on the U of U and on the various union sites, you will be able to download a kit and a draft charter in Word and in that process establish the campus, establish your account and have the workbench available for you to start to grid into the supreme financial system. And that is at a community level where the community retains its resources and, and works from the bottom up. So the financial system is very much wedded into making sure that those local campuses start to become formalised. It's been a long, long wait. I know it's been unbelievably frustrating. It has for me. But all I ask is for the couple more weeks to have them ready to turn them on to show you and then we will absolutely go through. Uh, so, yeah, that is the short and sharp and straight answer on what's going on with the financial system. All right, very good. Thank you, Frank. Um, since we are on the topic of executor, um, Greg put in a comment here about stopping the attempts of the judge uh, of them trying to assert that we are the executor based on, based on tort when it's actually been them that has, take it on that split that position and then trying to pass it on to, to us as we stand there in the court. Well, that's crucial. And in fact, um, I want everyone to understand that the reaction of a judge when you identify yourself as a general executor is an act. Well, partly an act. It's probably partly real and partly an act. But it is a trained act. And the reason that the judge goes on the huffy the huff and puff, is because what the judge has just done is the judge reacting that way has made you an executor to song tort rather than accepting your position as executor. People need to understand that. You have claimed your right as general executor of that matter and the judge has gone, ooh, 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 ooh. What the judge has just done is in actually changed your position in an instant to the executive to sign tort. If your response after their huff and puff is not, are you saying, are you claiming to be the executive to sign tort rather than a public trustee? Unless you respond like that, then the judge will proceed on the basis that you are a fraud, as executive son taught, and will call in the sheriff. The sheriff and the bailiff is there to protect the executor. So when the judge calls the executor, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the sheriff or the bailiff, they are absolutely testing your mettle. You want to shut that down, you make it very clear. Are you claiming to be the executive to son tort rather than being a trustee, a public trustee? Burst the bubble. Burst the bubble and see what happens. The judge will back down faster than you can count to five. I hope that makes that clear. All right? Yes, very good. Thank you for that, Frank. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight with... Uh, Frank and the University of Acadia Talk Show Show. And uh, we really appreciate all your participation and questions for tonight. Thank you, Frank, for going over a little bit of uh, some extra time, putting it on our good questions and discussions. And uh, those of you that didn't get your questions in, just please join us next week, and we'll get to those questions next week. And uh, with that, we're a wrap.
Thanks, Terry. Thanks, everyone. And I look forward to speaking and sharing with you.